Hello everyone, Matt from Model Minutes here and welcome to my take on the Airfix range of 2024. It's just dropped, I'm doing this like four hours after the announcement. Sadly I was in work so I missed everything but I've managed to catch up and I think I'm there now. But this is a bit of a tradition now isn't it? I've done this for the last few years so uh, let's get stuck straight in and see what Airfix are doing this year. Uh, just a quick disclaimer, naturally everything that I've done here is believed to be correct at the time I created this video. However, there may be errors because I am only human and uh, sometimes I read things wrong. And uh, naturally Airfix may change information as and when they decide to, depending on what's going on in the business. So things may change. I think it's also worth mentioning as well that people aren't always going to see things that they want to see. They're not always going to have the kits that they want. And that's absolutely fine. If you disagree with my opinion, that's absolutely fine too. Just let me know down in the comments what you were expecting to see and perhaps what you're excited about. So let's start off with the brand new releases. So these are brand new tools for 2024. So straight in, we've got a Boeing Chinook in 172nd scale. So this is going to have the Bravo November paint scheme plus one other. To the best of my knowledge, it's going to have two paint schemes. Retailing for $33.99, that seems to be a reasonable price for a brand new tooling of a Chinook in 172nd scale. We can expect to see this one in the spring of this year. So I expect that one will be in the shops in a couple of months or so. Personally, I don't really do helicopters that often, but it is something I could be keen on getting, perhaps in the future. Up next, we've got a big kit. This is the Consolidated B-24H Liberator, a brand new tooling of this large World War II bomber. Again, expected in the spring of 2024. Apparently, it features two paint schemes and detailed interior and bomb bay. So that should be something to see. I already have quite a lot of uh, large projects and small projects to get completed with, but it would be interesting to see this one in the flesh. Up next, we've got the Bristol Bulldog Mark II. This one is coming in at 148th scale. I did build the 172nd scale vintage version many years ago, and I remember that one being okay. This one looks to be really nice. I would say as a small point, perhaps go and check out the Airfix video if you haven't already done so, because they will show uh, more footage and things that they have access to. Definitely worth taking a look to see what the paint schemes they might be including. Retailing for £28.99, that seems to be in line with the larger 148 scale kits that they have. And with 120 pieces, I imagine that it will sport quite a bit of detail. For those of you who enjoy the quick build series, we have a couple of new entries, both in the armor section. And these are actually scaled to 135th scale. So the first one is a Sherman Firefly, retailing for just under £20. This should be a fun and simple build. It builds up similar to other construction uh, block systems that exist. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of quick build, but I can understand why other people like them. To go alongside your Sherman, if you want to have a bit of a battle, is a Tiger One. It makes sense to sell these two together, or at the very least release them together. Retailing for the same price and being available around the same time, this should make a good adversary for the Sherman. Moving on to some starter sets. So we have a brand new tooling of the P-51D Mustang in 172nd scale. I know that Airfix already have a P-51D Mustang in 172nd scale from a few years ago, but this is designed specifically to be a starter set. And that's represented by the very low part count of 31 parts. This will feature a shadow stand as well, so you can have your aircraft in a flying pose if you want it. Coming complete with some paints, glue and a brush, this should be a good entry into the world of scale modelling. I would be interested to see what this one is like and how it compares to the existing P51 tooling. Something I anticipated seeing when uh, the Airfix Spitfire came out a number of years ago was a Messerschmitt BF109 to go against it. And we now have a brand new tooling of the 109F4 in 172nd scale. Again, designed to be a starter set, so it will have a simple construction, but should have relatively good details. This is again reflected in the very low part count of only 30 being included in the kit. However, you do get a shadow stand as well. 
Another new starter set in 170 second scale that joins the range this year is a Eurofighter Typhoon FGR4, which I imagine replaces the much older Eurofighter Typhoon tooling that they have in the range. I've built the much older one. I believe it was based off of the prototype Typhoon, so it tells you how old it is. It's a bit of a clunky kit. Hopefully this has better detail, despite the fact that it is a starter set. It also comes with a shadow stand and a slightly higher part count. That is reflected naturally in the fact that it has a slightly higher price than the other starter sets due to the fact that it is a larger model. But we should see that one in the next 12 months at some point. Another new release that I'm actually quite excited about to experience is the RNLI Shannon class lifeboat. So this is retailing for $19.99 and features 54 parts. And by the looks of it, it comes with a little stand as well. This is expected towards the beginning of 2024, and it will be interesting to see what this one is like. Naturally, some of the proceeds from this kit will go to help support the charity. Definitely a model that I could be interested in getting. I guess I'll have to put my pre-order in. So moving on to the gift sets. So these feature models which are not necessarily new, um, but I'm going to cover them anyway. So we have the D-Day Fighters gift set, given that it is one of the anniversaries of D-Day. Retailing for just shy under £50, you get a variety of different aircraft that all saw combat during that time. We have a Spitfire, a Mustang, a Messerschmitt BF109G, the Tempest and the FW190A8. So these kits are a slight mixed bag. Some of them are more recent toolings than others. So you may notice a slight difference in the kits as you go through. The BF109 G6 in particular is rather simple and doesn't feature many parts, but apparently all aircraft can be positioned on an included display stand. This may well be a very good way of getting all of the aircraft in one go with a good selection of paints to go with it. Personally, though, having built every single one apart from maybe the Mark 9, I probably won't be getting this one. Moving on, we have another gift set. It's a return of a dogfight double. So this features a Mark 5C Spitfire and the BF 109F4. So I did think that a Spitfire that was released a few years ago would have a BF 109 to go along with it at some point. And I guess I was right on the money with that one. So retailing for $19.99, that would be a reasonable price to get both both kits in one go. As they are the um, starter set versions, you will get the shadow stands included in this set. Another gift set, another dogfight doubles, and this time it features the same BF-109, but instead paired against a P-51. This is probably the version I would be interested in getting, so I could experience both of these new tooled kits for myself. That's it for the brand new toolings this year, so let's take a look at the re-releases. Some of them will feature new um, parts or, or new paint schemes, but others will be just complete re-boxes of the original or a previous version. So straight up we've got some quick builds which are coming out and these are the simple construction block type kits and this one is a Ford F-150 Raptor in grey. It's quite difficult finding out when the tooling dates are for these kits so um, if anybody knows just let me know down in the comments but I'll just put a question mark but they are relatively recent. This one is expected in the summer and retails for $16.99. There is a quick build Lamborghini Huracan Evo, which retailing for $14.99 and containing 45 parts, you can expect to see this one in the spring. A Bugatti Chiron in black, again retailing for the same price with 44 parts and expected towards the end of the year. And then finally an Audi TT Coupe in blue, which is going to be available in the summer. Moving on to the traditional classic kits then, we have the older Spitfire Mark 1A in 172nd scale. One of the cheaper kits in the range and one of the older ones dating from 2010. It does however sport a brand new paint scheme. I've built a number of these and I'm not sure I could be tempted by the newer paint scheme, but I guess never say never. Up next to go with it is a Messerschmitt BF109E4, again in a new paint scheme this year. Being a slightly younger tooling and having built this one a number of times, I know it comes with some engine detail, so you can display the cowling open if you want to do so. Personally, though, probably just like the Spitfire, not going to get this one, but it may find its way into my stash at some point. 
An aircraft that I could be tempted by is the Gloucester Gladiator Mark 1 slash 2. This is a 2013 tooling and I do actually have one of these in the stash and it looks to be a very high quality version of the aircraft. The version I have comes with two different canopies and I believe this one is exactly the same. This one will come in two different paint schemes, but generally I get a little bit put off by all of that rigging, so I'm not sure that this one will make its way across my workbench this year. Another reintroduction is the Hawker Typhoon Mark 1B. This is a pretty good kit. I built the starter set version, or correctly I should say it's the gift set version now, seeing as it's not actually a starter set, a few years ago. And it has the option of displaying it with the gun bays open, which is always good fun. This one should be available towards the end of this year. Another aircraft that requires some rigging is the de Havilland Tiger Moth. This one is in 172nd scale and is a little bit on the older side of the newer versions of kits that Airfix have been releasing recently. I do have the 148 scale version in the stash and that looks to be quite nice so if that's anything to go by this will be a fairly nice build as well. Moving on, we've got the Spitfire PR-19. Just taking a second there to try and figure out my Roman numerals. This one should be towards the middle of the year and it's 172nd scale. And apparently it's gonna feature some new paint schemes. Again, if you're into Spitfires, this would be perfect for you. However, I probably have more than enough to be getting on with. So again, this probably won't make its way into my stash. Up next is another aircraft, which I've had in my stash a few times, but this time in a few different paint schemes. I've built this kit a couple of times and it goes together really well. So if you wanted a fairly simple kit to build, this would be perfect for you. Retailing for just under £12, it's not exactly going to break the bank. And you should be able to see this one towards the middle of the year. Another aircraft that's making a reappearance, but this time in different paint schemes, is the MiG-17F. A slightly larger aircraft, which is reflected in the price of $17.99 and the higher part count of $87. Apparently, it does come with the option to have the canopy in an open position. One of the paint schemes included this year will be a captured American version, which would be an interesting one to complete. It's not a particularly old tooling either, dating from 2019. And if you want this one, you better get that pre-order in because it will be out in the summer. An aircraft that I am a little bit excited for because I have one in the stash is the Supermarine Swift FR5. This is one of those kits that kind of exists in the Airfix range and doesn't have anywhere else to go. A lot of the kits in the Airfix range tend to have options. You know, Spitfires can be um, changed into maybe like the Mark 1 could also be a Mark 2 and a Mark 5, so they have extra parts. However, the Supermarine Swift exists as it exists. This is the, exactly the same tooling and uh, offering and paint schemes that was from 2015. I have one in the stash. It is a very nice looking kit. It does have a few small issues with it, particularly the fact there's no pilot included, but I could be tempted to get this again and have a go at doing both of them in both paint schemes. So I best get my pre-order in because apparently they won't be too long before they are in the shops. If you'd like to know more before you see this one, make sure you check out my unboxing. Another aircraft in 172nd scale is the Bristol Beaufort Mark 1A, but this time this comes in new paint schemes with new parts for the upper turret. Retailing for $23.99, that doesn't seem to me to be a particularly bad price for a double-engine torpedo bomber. Being tooled in 2021, it's not one of the oldest kits in the range either. Moving on to another aircraft, which also has new parts, is the Gloucester Meteor F8 FR9. I have a slightly earlier version in the stash from the club offering, uh, which was released last year, I think. This time, though, you're getting new parts, which include the FR9 camera variant and rocket armaments. From my look at the kit I have in the stash, it's a very high quality model and it's retailing for $23.99 with 154 parts and you can see that one towards the summer. Up next is a rotary aircraft and this is a rebox of the Westland Sea King HC4. This time in some new paint schemes and featuring 133 parts, this 2015 tooling is going to be retailing for $23.99 and again you can see it towards the summer. 
Another aircraft making a reappearance is this little trainer, the de Havilland Chipmunk T10 slash T20. This is 148 scale and does have quite a lot of detail. I've seen this one a number of times in the flesh. I don't have one myself, but it looks to be a really nice kit. Small issue with the wings, I believe, but I think it's easily fixed by removing the um, locating pins to make them sit a little bit more correctly. I know I said when uh, this was originally announced, I'd get one of these back in 2021, but uh, alas, I've not quite got there yet. Perhaps I'll get one this year. An aircraft that I would be interested in getting though is the next one because I love a Tomahawk. So this is the 148 scale 2016 tooling of the Tomahawk Mark II. This time it's going to be released in two new paint schemes. One of them is going to be a green and grey kind of version but still with some teeth on the nose. So I could be tempted to get another one to do that so it can sit alongside my desert version that I have. Being a 2016 tooling, it might seem a bit old, but don't let that fool you because I've built this one and it goes together really nicely. It might not be the most detailed kit in the world, but it does have a good level of detail anyway. And there's a build video of a previous offering on my channel if you'd like to take a look. This is due out in the summer, so pre-order, I might need to put one in. Another 148 scale aircraft making a reappearance is the BF109E 3 slash E4. This is a 2010 tooling, so one of the slightly older kits in the range and retailing for $28.99. I haven't experienced one of these kits, so I'm not entirely sure what it's like, but I'm sure it will be well received. Up next is an aircraft which I actually have built, and I built this many years ago, back in 2019, I think it was, when it was in its sort of semi-original state maybe it was not the original maybe it was like a slightly later version but it was a very interesting build i did actually end up motorizing mine and there is a build video of that on my channel if you want to take a look 39.99 would seem to be a a little bit high for a 170 second scale aircraft but let me tell you now you're getting a lot in this kit you might not look at the part count and go oh you know 152 that's not a lot but the size of this aircraft it's like the size of a four engine aircraft but only with two so yeah definitely take a look at that video if you'd like to know more personally not something i'd be tempted to put back into my stash as i've already done this one up next is a Supermarine Warrus Mark 1. This is the 148 scale version and it's been in and out of the range a number of times since it was tooled in 2017. I'm led to believe that this is a generally quite good model but I am a little bit put off by the fact it has all that rigging but that's just me some people love to do rigging and some people will be quite happy to build this and not put the rigging in but um, yeah I'm probably not going to add this to the stash but again never say never a kit that I could be interested in adding to the stash is something that goes along with something we've seen a little bit earlier and that is the RNLI 7 class lifeboat this is making a reappearance this year to go alongside its little brother or sister that we saw in the starter set range this is a slightly older tooling from the new airfix range dating from 2007 it's not quite old enough to be a vintage classic so that's why it's still in the classic kit range it does, however, feature a wealth of details and has 238 parts. This should be out at the beginning part of the year, so best get those pre-orders in if you want one of this one. Up next is a re-release of the Cromwell Mark IV slash Mark VI. This is a 135th scale tank, and I couldn't actually find the part number on the Airfix website when I was making this video, but my guess is about 200 or so. I'm led to believe that this may have corrected parts for an error that was um, previously molded. So well done Airfix for fixing those little mistakes. So if you're into armored vehicles, there is something here for you this year. However, that's it from the classic kits, and we now move on to the vintage classics. So up first, we've got some figures, and the first lot of figures we're looking at is the Guards Colour Party. So these are the very recognisable guards in their red uniforms, and this is going to be quite a cheap kit, so kind of pocket money value if you wanted one of these at $5.99. However, it does date from 1961. Not all kits are bad and not all bad kits are old, but with 42 parts and for that very low price, it'd probably be worth taking a look at them. It would certainly make for some interesting dioramas and we could see those in the summer. 
To go along with the colour party, though, is the Guards Band, again tooled in 1961, and this contains 44 parts. Not entirely sure that I'd want to get both of these sets, but as they're so cheap, it could be something I'd consider. Something I have built from the Vintage Classics range, though, is the next one we're going to look at, and that is the Hawker P1127, or 1127. This was the prototype of the Harrier Jump Jet, and I built this one in my youth, so back in the early 2000s. If I remember correctly, the nozzles could be positioned forwards or backwards um, due to the design of the kit, so you didn't have to have them down or back, you could actually swivel them after you've assembled it. However, I remember it being a slightly clunky kit with generally raised details throughout. Retailing for a quite a low price though, and despite the fact it dates from 1963, it would be an interesting aircraft to have in your collection. If you are a fan of ships, we've got a couple of reintroductions this year in the Vintage Classic range. The HMS Ajax in 1 to 600 scale. This is a 1965 tooling. Personally, not sure I'd be interested in getting this one, as I still have some of the Vintage Classic ships to build in my stash. So let's try and get them built before I buy any more. Another vintage classic ship is the HMS Iron Duke, a slightly larger kit at £20.49. This is a 1970 tooling with 183 parts. However, you might be waiting a little while for this one as it's not due until the winter. A rotary aircraft that I know some people have been asking for is the Bristol 192 Belvedere. This is something that I could be interested in getting due to the fact that it is a very unique aircraft. Granted, I know that the, uh, the Chinook that we had earlier was another twin rotor aircraft design, but this one just looks so interesting. This is a 172nd scale kit which contains 50 parts and was tooled in 1959, so it's probably one of the oldest kits that Airfix has ever made. It does supposedly come with two paint scheme options though, so I'm keen to see what you actually get inside this one. However, I'll be waiting a while because that's not due until the summer. An aircraft which I was surprised to see in the range, but very tempted to get is the Handley Page Hampton. So I actually wanted one of these when I was much younger and I never got the chance to get one. Being a very interesting looking twin engine early war bomber for the RAF, I was quite intrigued by it. Retailing for £20.49, that doesn't seem to be a particularly high price for this twin engine aircraft. However, it is worth remembering that this is a 1968 tooling and it only comes apparently with one paint scheme. Whilst it won't necessarily be up to the standard of the B-24 that was seen earlier in this range, I'm sure it will be a favourite with many modellers on their workbench. A little bit of a wait though for this aircraft as it's not due until the autumn. We now move on to the large scale kit. So we have the 124th scale North American P-51D Mustang. This is the super kit that was designed and tooled back in 1973. Being previously available in the slightly misleading red boxes as the normal classic line, it has now taken its place in the Vintage Classics range. According to the Airfix website, it's going to be retailing slightly cheaper than other Vintage Classics that have been available as well at $69.99. At 124th scale and featuring 238 parts, despite its age, it probably will build up to quite a nice model. I actually have the uh, 124th scale uh, Hawker Hurricane which is a vintage classic as well, and that one seemed to be fairly decent despite the fact it is an older tooling. So if you wanted a larger scale model to mess around with, this would probably be it. And speaking of this being it, that is it. That's everything that Airfix, to the best of my knowledge, has announced this year. However, just with 2023, there could be fingers crossed, some surprise announcements. So back in 2023, there were a couple of kits, particularly the ME410 and the uh, Westland Sea King that were announced and released partway through the year. So they came completely out of the blue and just, there you go, there's a kit, there's a new kit for you. So maybe this year we'll see something like that. But I just want to take a moment as I do every time I make one of these videos is to run through a summary. So new tool wise, we had two quick build tanks, six brand new aircraft, three of which were starter sets and three of which were classic kits. We had one new ship as a starter set, which was that little RNLI lifeboat. 
We've got some re-releases as well. We've got four quick builds coming back into the range. 17 aircraft with only a couple of them having brand new parts, but many of them having new schemes, but most being straight up re-releases of previous versions. We've got three gift sets which feature a number of different aircraft. We have one ship and one tank. In the vintage classic range, we've got two figure sets, two ships and four aircraft, which in total, if my maths is correct and I've not missed anything, is 43 products, which if we compare to last year's range announcement is one more product than um, the previous 2023 range as that had 42. However, I'm sure those of you who are into ships, tanks and figures are probably wondering why it was so low on the tank ships and figures front. Last year, there were more vehicles in the range. However, this year it looks to me as though Airfix have focused their time and effort on the starter set area. FX is quite famous for having a larger aircraft range than others, and it does slowly venture into the other areas as well. So perhaps during the year, something that we'll see as a surprise is something that is not an aircraft and is a ship figure or tank. But let me know down in the comments, what will you get and what did you think of the range this year? Do you agree with some of my comments? Do you not? Let me know what you think, what you would excited to see and what you maybe were disappointed didn't show up in the range this year. On the whole, I think that it has been a very good year for those who enjoy aircraft. And there are definitely some there that I'd be interested in getting. Maybe the Hampton, perhaps that Bulldog. But those RNLI ships would be something that I could get a pre-order in for as soon as I finish creating this video. As always, a quick shout out to my channel members and patrons for the extra support they give the channel. Make sure you check out the link in the description to find out how you can become a member of the club. Massive thanks to these guys on screen. If you'd like to support me in another way, there are other ways you can do so. And again, full description is underneath the video. However, the best way to support this channel for free is by subscribing and turning those notifications on so you never miss any modeling uploads. If you'd like to find out more about the Airfix 2024 range, I suggest that you check out our friend Moz6510 Models, who did a live stream, and I'll link that underneath. Usually Moz gets everyone together and has a go at doing a live stream as it gets announced live, and they discuss um, their thoughts and feelings on what is released, and it's usually a good laugh. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it because I was busy. Additionally, as mentioned earlier, take a look at the official Airfix 2024 range launch video, which gets better every single year they do one. And I'm sure that one day I probably won't need to make my own video. I do hope that you've enjoyed this one and are looking forward to a year full of modeling activities. Finally, though, I think the last thing to say is a massive thank you to you for watching this, and I'll see you on the workbench again next time.